Hey guys, even here, and we are two days out of Puerto Rico Pro, so we're gonna check out what these bodybuilders right here on this list are looking like right now. So I highlighted the top names, the guys that competed recently in all the top shows and placed really well. The others, I know little or nothing about them, so I'm not gonna really mention them, but the highlighted guys, yes, Eli Bracamontes, Jamie, uh, Christian Joel, uh, Dorian Haywood, Hassan Mostafa, Mohamed Shaban, and Akim Williams. So we have some updates of these guys, and I think, as far as I know, I didn't really check out all the other guys, but this is probably gonna be your top six right here. First spot, in my opinion, is gonna be Akim Williams, who just updated us with these two shots. Actually, his coach updated us, and he looks absolutely amazing, and he is winning this show, it's pretty certain. I would expect of him to do a higher caliber of a show, something like at least Chicago Pro, because he's a top six Olympian, guys. That's only one spot for being automatically qualified. He missed it for one spot. So he's a top six Olympian, and it's really hard to beat a top six Olympian. Not only the momentum that he was six at Mr. Olympia, but also the way he looks right now. Now, I don't really see the conditioning that I saw at the Mr. Olympia, but I think he knows that and he's fine with that. After depleting, I mean, after carving up and then dehydrating, he's gonna look a little bit tighter, but the glutes are not exactly super completely peeled. Do they have to be? I don't think so. I think it's a pretty safe bet to go with Akin Williams. Now, here he's showing us his side chest pose, where he looks... Good, for sure, that's one of his best poses, because he's showing a lot of leg mass, especially the quadriceps. Here it looks just good. And also you can see the, 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 the striations in the glutes from the side, you can see the huge arms he has. Just a great display of enormous mass this guy possesses. Now from the back, he's doing back lat spread, and it is a pose where you can really hide your, your high lats that he has. His lats are really high, you can see it here, but when he does this pose, when he connects the lats with arms and forearms, and he does this pose this way, I mean, you cannot really see it in the back lat spread, but if he did a back double bicep, you would see the, the, the weakness, and it's his biggest weakness for Kim Williams, it's high lats, and it's not like Dennis full of high lats, no, these lats are really, really high, and it really hurts him. If he had lower lats, he would probably be like top three at the Mr. Olympia last year. Uh, let's not talk about that, that's a different discussion, but as far as his back right here, it does look peeled, it does look really thick, really massive, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of muscle, a lot of muscle that Akim is packing, it's gonna be really difficult to beat him, uh, who is the guy that is close to his mass? It's this guy, Mohamed Shaban, who just took second at the California Pro, losing to Patrick Moore, very controversially, a lot of people had him winning the show because he was way more massive than Patrick, but he didn't have the detail. And here, right here in these photos, you can see exactly what I'm talking about when I say details. He doesn't have them, he has the mass, he has the condition, he has the crazy amount of veins, like the vascularity is just insane, but he doesn't have the lines, he doesn't have the separations, he doesn't have the definition. Why? I don't know, it could be genetics, it could be a thick skin, it could be sight enhancement oil, I don't know. But I mean, take a look at his quads right here. Do they remind you of another bodybuilder? Maybe a Mr. Olympia winner? Yeah, Big Ramy. Who is, by the way, Egyptian. Mohamed Shaban is Egyptian too. Both of these guys are, or at least were, part of Kuwait crew. So both of these guys have these two things in common. Egypt and Kuwait. There is another guy though who is also Egyptian, who also has the same problem with the quads, overly, overly developed quads, and not super separated, that's Hassan Mustafa, interesting. Three guys from Egypt have the same thing going on. I need to make a separate video about this, but let's just focus on Mohamed Shaban for now. So, as far as his physique, you can see his legs, they are huge, and they are conditioned, you can see the thin skin, you can see the vascularity, but you don't really see the, the lines, right, the separation, like, look at the middle, middle quads, compare this to, for example, Nick Walker, not even comparable, right, so why is this, is this genetics, do Egyptian guys have a little leg separation and a lot of leg mass, is that genetic for Egyptians, or maybe these guys all have huge legs, so much muscle, that the muscle got so thick that it is basically not showing the separation because it got so close together. I don't know how much sense does it make, but that's gonna be an issue for this guy right here. Not only the legs, really, but everywhere else. He has the conditioning. I mean, take a look at this photo, for example. The back, the glutes, do seem pretty shredded. 
The hamstrings not really separated, but take a look at the back and, and the lats. Like, you don't really see this kind of vascularity unless you have lost all the fat behind the, beneath the skin, right? So you can see a lot of veins, crazy vascularity, but again, you don't really see those deep cuts, the separations, the striations. So, I don't know if this is genetic or not, but it's gonna hurt him. He's a big dude, he's really big. But Patrick Moore, who is probably, by the way, the smallest bodybuilder ever who cracked the top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, was able to beat Mohamed Shaban here. Okay, maybe this is not the best comparison because Patrick's best pose is side tricep and this is not a good pose for Shaban. But take a look at this one, for example. Just take a look at the sheer mass. I mean, the lateral head of the quadriceps, uh, the teardrop as well. I mean, the overall legs, like, Mohamed Shaban has so much more mass. Chest. When Patrick does a, the front double bicep, his pecs stretch and they look significantly smaller. It's not a case with Muhammad Shaban. His chest is still big and thick because it has a lot of muscle on it. And then the lats as well. So the only thing that Patrick had on him was separations. Not really conditioning. I think they were pretty much close as far as conditioning. But the separations, the straightions, the definition, the lines, you know? That's the difference and that's what hurt him at California Pro. And now he's facing another guy who is probably just as conditioned as Patrick, only 10 times bigger, and that's Akim Williams. So for Mohamed Shaban to win this show, yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough, nearly impossible. You can see this photo right here, this is his most recent physique update. So you can see that he is conditioned. The glutes are in, uh, the hamstrings, the quads, the back. He's really, really conditioned. And the only thing that can hurt him is the details, the lines. But I am considering him, you know, as a top threat. That's not by accident. I really do see a lot in this guy because he has so much mass and he has the nice shape. It's gonna be the only one issue and we'll see how much will it affect his placing. But I do have him in top two. I don't think he can be third. Maybe third really depending on whether Hassan Mustafa finally manages to bring the conditioning or not. If he does... He has a good chance of, well, I don't want to say winning the show, because Akeem is really good. But to be second, yeah, Hassan can be second and then win a few points and get a little bit closer to getting to that Mr. Olympia stage. Alright, next one is very interesting. It is Keon Pearson, 212 competitor now, a former classic physique competitor, who is really shredded at four weeks out of Chicago Pro, but too small. I don't know, I mean, when I saw this, I wasn't sure if this is recent or from when he was doing classic, because also he says he's 178 here. His cutoff in 212 is 212 pounds. So that makes Keon 35 pounds under the weight limit. Guys, that's a lot. That's kind of a lot. So I don't know who else is doing the show, but if there are any heavy hitters, some guys who are actually 212 or at least close to that, it's gonna be tough for Ken because he has four weeks more to go, and I don't know if his glutes are really in, they can be a little bit more shredded, but he's basically there, close, maybe he's like one week out, even though he has four weeks, he looks like he's one week out, maybe two weeks out tops, basically he's ready, I mean, you can see the lower lats on the right photo, you can see the hamstrings in both photos, so yeah, glutes can be, I guess, a little bit tighter, but they're pretty good, so he's 178, I hope he doesn't go any lower, hopefully he will increase the food and somehow grow into the show, keep the same level of conditioning, and he says he's really flat here, so maybe that's the thing, maybe he got really, really, really depleted and flat, and when he carves up, he's gonna look much, much bigger and fuller, but he does look a little bit smaller here, uh, based on what I'm seeing, I don't know if you guys see it the same way, if you do, tell me down below, but honestly, I wasn't sure if this is recent or not, because he does look a little bit stringy, quite a bit, really, I thought he was much bigger, and I didn't think that he was 178, I thought he was close to the weight limit, but I mean, that's the illusion that you're talking about, the genetics, he has the genetics, he looks like he's much bigger than he is, apparently. We have yet to wait to see how this will translate to the stage, but I'm expecting him to be bigger than this on stage once he carves up and hopefully doesn't lose any more mass until the show day. Next up we have Sergio Oliva, who is doing some bicep hammer curls and whose arms and overall entire physique looks absolutely freaking massive. 
And I wanted to mention this because there are people who are actually not sure if he's doing Chicago Pro or not. Because he said something about he might jump in in the last minute. But based on this video, I wouldn't say so. I don't think so. Because compared to this, this is Hunter Labrada who is actually doing Chicago Pro. This is a difference in conditioning. It's a big difference. So no, I don't think Sergio is doing Chicago Pro. No way. By the way, yeah, Hunter posted this photo as well. And you can see his conditioning is pretty much done. He's pretty much ready for the stage, he looks conditioned, he looks great, uh, there's four weeks left, I think he's a little bit ahead of time, maybe like, uh, he looks also like one week out, two weeks out, yeah, he's pretty much there already, and uh, Sergio, nah, I mean, maybe I'm quick to judge, I'm just looking at arms and, and, and shoulders, but yeah, if he was four weeks out, really, he wouldn't look this smooth, you would see separations in the brachialis, in the biceps, in the forearms, in the, in, in the delts, for sure, he wouldn't be this big and full, so yeah, he, he's getting ready for that Arnold Classic, not doing Chicago, bro, maybe he'll jump in to another show bit before Arnold Classic, but Chicago in four weeks, I don't think that's gonna happen, if he jumps in looking like this, I mean a little bit better, he probably wouldn't win against Hunter, so I don't think he would risk it, I don't think we're gonna see Sergio Oliva before Arnold Classic, maybe some show close to Arnold Classic, but probably just Arnold, and I don't want to sound rude or something, but he gave up on Chicago, so now that kind of jeopardizes his integrity. How sure can we be if he's doing Arnold Classic or he's just saying that? Because he needs it, because of his contracts, his company, I don't know. Yeah, it sounds bad, but it's just something that crossed my mind, and I'm sure it crossed yours at some point as well. So I'm pretty sure I, I believe he's not going to drop out of Arnold Classic. He said he never dropped out of a show that he said he's going to do. It happened once. Yeah, we, we forgive him for that. So yeah, just I just want to see him on that Arnold Classic stage, and I want to see him do well. Alright, Flex Lewis. Now, this definitely requires a separate video or a little bit of an investigation to find out if he's competing this year or not. He didn't say anything. He did open a gym, though. So, I'm sure that, so that took a lot of focus. And he probably wasn't really able to focus 100% on training and eating and doing all the things that he needs to do to make progress for his bodybuilding career. But he kind of promised. I mean, he should have competed last year. He gave up because he had a shoulder injury or an older nagging injury just got up to him. So he had to do a surgery and uh, he said he's going to be competing next year. This is that was 2021. 2021 came. We are about 16 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. And is he competing or not? I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I saw I saw a lot of photos of him and he does look big. He does look very thick. He looks like he didn't lose any muscle. Maybe have gained a little. And I just saw this photo, a new photo, he's promoting something, I don't care about that, but you can see his arms and forearms right here, and uh, you can see the size overall, the vascularity, I mean the conditioning point, so he's looking decent based on this photo. I have no idea if he's competing or not, uh, I just want to say he looks pretty big, he looks like he could compete. Uh, Mr. Olympia, yeah, he has enough time to get ready for the Mr. Olympia, I just would like for him to announce whether he's doing it or not, or what he's thinking about right now, because nobody really knows at this point. We'll have to wait and see, I really hope we're gonna see him, but based on uh, what I can see right now, I, I don't think he's gonna be doing it. I don't see, I don't see that. He didn't say anything, why would he do that? And he opened a gym, come on guys, we're probably not gonna see Flex Lois, unfortunately. Let's hope for the best, but let's expect the worst. I think it's gonna be Mr. Olympia without Flex Lois. And I wanted to show you something different for the end of this video. It's uh, Sylvester Stallone, who is not a bodybuilder, but he did showcase his physique throughout his movies all the time, and he was one of the guys that I'm sure most of you guys were motivated by and wanted to look like. And this is him right now. He's, uh, now he's much older than he was at, his, at the peak of his career. But the arms are looking great right now. I mean, the biceps are pretty big, the triceps do. I'm not even sure if this is photoshopped or not, but it does look really impressive. The size of his arms, I'm sure nobody would mind having these big arms, especially at his age. So, yeah, the, these arms are looking very impressive. You can see The Rock's comment as well. So, these two guys are both movie stars and also, uh, let's call them bodybuilders. 
uh, on a big screen. You know, they 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 were building their bodies and they were getting shredded for the for the movies. The same way bodybuilders are doing for their shows. They weren't competing against anybody, but they were showcasing their physiques. And this is what Sylvester Stallone looks like right now in 2021 so guys if you enjoyed this video please like it if you want to see more videos like this subscribe to my channel all the best guys and bye bye